morning friends we are back with yet another episode of bmc global life al hilal health world nothing but lifestyle i am anupama menon as the saying goes prevention is better than cure in this talk show health world we have expert doctors from various fields offering you valuable information and tips on how to maintain good health and keep diseases at bay today we delighted to have with us dr bushra sai taj hamsa al sharaf the family medicine consultant at al hilal hospital salmabad dr bushra comes with a wealth of experience over 21 years of experience in the field of family medicine and today's topic of discussion would be hyperlipidemia which is high cholesterol and hypertension thank you for joining us on the show doctor and welcome to the show thank you so can we begin by uh, discussing what exactly is hyperlipidemia hyperlipidemia it is a high cholesterol which we have a many types of cholesterol starting from the bad types of cholesterol the first one it is called ldl which is low density lipoproteins and the second bad cholesterol is the vdrl which is a very low density lipoprotein okay as well as a triglyceride and we have a good cholesterol in our blood which is called the high density lipoprotein okay so what are the different types of cholesterols that we have in our body uh, as i mentioned uh -huh. that we have three types okay which are a bad cholesterol okay and one type which is a very good cholesterol okay we need it to be a very high as much as possible and we are happy to see it even more than 40 reaching more than 60 of milligram per deciliter in our blood and the bad cholesterol mm -hmm. they are the ldl mm -hmm. which we need to be a very low in our blood okay. which is it should be less than 130 milligram per deciliter as well as the triglyceride it should be less than 150 milligram per deciliter and very low density lipoprotein should be less than 50 mg per deciliter okay so triglycerides and ldl are the risk yes, factors with the vdrl as well okay okay and what are the risk factors associated with hyperlipidemia what are the diseases that it could lead to if it's left unchecked or uncontrolled another way we can say what is the causes of hyperlipidemia mm -hmm. first of all it could be as a primary cause related in some family some of the genetics Hereditary. yes it okay. could be run in the family okay and there is another causes it is acquired causes mm -hmm. which it is a wide spread now that a lifestyle changes has been happens for example as we are eating a lot of fast foods mm. a lot of fats in our foods as well as there is less activities as well as smoking alcohol they are all risk factors to have a high cholesterol in our blood as well as obesity overweight some diseases for example thyroid with a hypothyroidism okay. can be also as associated with high cholesterol level in our blood okay. also some types of a drugs can be increasing the risk of high cholesterol in our blood these including the antihypertensive medications for example the diuretics beta blockers or oral contraceptive pills it is also considered one of the causes that risk for having a high cholesterol in our blood okay and what are the symptoms of uh, high cholesterol are there any physical manifestation do you see it in the body in any form or only when you get it checked you realize that you have High mostly of the times that it could be asymptomatic mm -hmm. that there is two main signs we can notice that there is a cholesterol ring could be seen around the iris of the eye okay and or a fatty plaques which is deposed on the skin this is the two main signs but most of the times it's like when we do a screening to check the cholesterol level they mm. notice that they have a high blood cholesterol level okay so and this testing you mean you have to get your blood tested on fasting uh, fast when you're fasting uh, uh, yeah actually screening morning. is okay. a very important in detecting early cases of hyperlipidemia mm -hmm. 
that there is a high risk groups and there is the low risk groups. Okay. The high risk groups, this is a running in a family, a family having a positive history of hyperlipidemia, or they have a strong history of a cardiovascular diseases. Disease. So we are starting early screening for these people, even from two years of age. Oh, right from yeah. two years of age. Okay. And uh, in a, a low risk people, mm -hmm. which they don't have a positive family history of hyperlipidemia or a coronary vascular diseases, they are usually going to test between 9 and 11 years okay. of age okay. uh, or between like 17 to 20 years of age. Okay. Uh, so doctor, what is a mode of treatment once uh, a person is detected with hyperlipidemia? How do you go about treating it? Yeah. First of all, we are advising the patients about changing the lifestyle, which is a very, important, very important to take care about healthy diet, to decrease the fat. Exercise, maybe. Of course, yes, regular exercise, even reducing the stress because the stress is main cause of all chronic diseases. Yes. Having enough sleeps, also as well quit smoking alcohol they are all play an important role for the first line management okay then we say the second line of management it depends on the type of the cholesterol we are choosing the type of the medicines either we can start with statins and it is depending on the type of the cholesterol which is high in the blood. Okay, and are these medicines harmful in the long run if you take it for a long period of time? Does it have any after effects? Yes, there is a side effect of these medications. Okay. Mainly the patients, they are complaining of muscle cramps and muscle pains. Okay. And the most important, which we have to keep eye on it, is affecting the liver enzymes. Okay. So these people, they should be regularly follow up for their liver enzymes. And when it is very high, we have either to stop the medicines for the sometimes or to be changing to another medicines which is not harming the liver. Okay. And what are the complications that can arise from hyperlipidemia? I guess heart disease, yes, as you mentioned, yes. is one of them. This but is what the, are the other? main complications of hyperlipidemia because hyperlipidemia it is a blake of fats mm -hmm. and these blakes of fat they can go to any arteries either in the heart or brains so it is one of the main causes of the cardiovascular diseases of uh, stroke sudden death heart arrest heart attack. and yes. uh, so it's very important for early screening evaluations and treatment. treatment and hypertension is also known to be a silent killer I, I think that also plays an equally important role in heart diseases yeah actually so, all these chronic diseases diabetic hypertension and hyperlipidemias they are a very important chronic diseases they can cause to a premature death mm -hmm. which they can cause a lot of a cardiovascular complications also hypertension, it can cause a renal diseases, can lead to end stage renal failures and the patients maybe at the future they will need a renal transplant. And we notice that the hypertension nowadays it's increasing worldwide. Okay. Even the last uh, studies in USA, they noticed that the cases is increasing up to double of the cases okay. and the non-communicable diseases survey in Bahrain in 2017 has been announced that also we have about 16.3% of the cases they are diagnosed to have a hypertension and about 26.4 they have a high diastolic and systolic blood pressure and the prevalence is increasing up to 38% in Bahrain for the hypertension. Okay. Doctor, in your observation, uh, the hypertension cases are on the rise, especially in uh, Bahrain. So do you think um, a lifestyle or stress plays an important role in this? What are the basic general causes of hypertension? Yes, of course, there is a many risk factors of hypertension. First is our lifestyles. Mm -hmm. 
again, we say in hyperlipidemias that having a fast food with high salt, salt with, intake. yes, mm. with a lot of fats, it must be affecting our blood pressure levels. Okay. And not to have a regular exercise, also this is another factor. Smoking. S smoking, mm -hmm. yes. alcohol, mm -hmm. obesity, overweight, these all risk factors could be as increasing the cases of hypertension, not only in Bahrain, but it is worldwide. Worldwide, okay. And what are the common symptoms? Because we normally say when we have a headache or we are feeling dizzy, then yeah. uh, that's known to be one of the symptoms of uh, hypertension. So is that so? And are there any other uh, physical symptoms that one may experience? Uh, Hypertension could be asymptomatic. Okay. But if there is a symptoms, mm -hmm. could be a headache. Mm -hmm and can be affecting of the eye. They can have double vision or blurred vision. Okay. They can have epistaxis, which is nose bleeding. Oh, nose they, bleeding is also a symptom of... Yes, uh, could okay. be as a symptom okay. of rise high blood pressures. Okay. They can have chest pain, shortness of the breath. They can have vomiting, fatigue. And there is many, many symptoms which could be related to the hypertension. And uh, what are the factors that affect the reading of blood pressure? Because these days we all have uh, BP monitors at home. A lot of times yes. we do the checking at home itself. And sometimes there is a variation when we go to a doctor and check. So yes. what are the factors that affect uh, the reading and how safe it is to check it at home? How trustworthy it is? It is very important questions because I got that questions from many mm. patients. Yes. As you say nowadays, the blood pressure machine, it is available and it is cheap, affordable. And it saves us the trouble of going to the clinic. Yeah. Uh, to the it. first factors that are affecting the blood pressure reading is the posture of the patients. Okay. How he, he is taking the blood pressure, is he sitting in the right positions with supporting of the back or is he in a supine positions or I mean sleeping positions. But the best posture for taking of the blood pressure is the sitting position with supporting of the back. Okay. And at least we don't depend on one readings. At least we have to take two readings at the same time. Same time. Okay. And sometimes in diagnosis of hypertension, we don't depend on one readings. At least the three readings and a part of a one week between each reading. Okay. The second factor which is affecting the blood pressure reading is the circumstances of the patients that he should be stopped taking any caffeine one hour before checking his blood pressures and at least 30 minutes to stop smoking that not affecting the reading of his blood pressures. Okay. Also the machine itself mm -hmm. that the cuff which is covering the arm it should be at least 80% covering the circumstances of the arms. Okay. It should be about 80% length and 40% width. So if an obese or uh, I mean it doesn't cover 80%, it mm. is usually giving a wrong, wrong reading, reading of yes blood pressures, okay. as well as calibrations of the machines Machine. because it contain a mercury. So it should be checked at least six months which is really to be done by the patients. It's very important. Okay. Even the machines that we use at home, you uh, say that yes, it has it to be calibrated be, every six months. Yes, yes. At least it should be checked and calibrated every six months. Okay. And how important is it to treat hypertension? What are the complications that this can lead to if left untreated? Hypertension, it is similar to hyperlipidemia, to diabetes mellitus. They are all considered as a causes of a coronary heart disease, congestive heart failure, stroke, end stage renal diseases. So it's very important for screening of the blood pressures and evaluations and management and treatment is very important from the beginning before having any complications that damage of these organs and we cannot reverse that damage. Okay, it's not uh, reversible, so we have to Yes, for example, if there is an end stage renal diseases, damage has okay. happened to the renal kidneys, tissues and cells, we cannot go back to retain it to 100%. So it's 
it's very important to reg, um, yes. regulate your BP and monitor, monitor it regularly yes. and make sure that it's under control. Yes. Okay. Doctor, it's time to wrap up the episode. So, before we wind up, any final advice to our viewers, um, you know, words of wisdom on how to uh, prevent and control both hyperlipidemia, high, high cholesterol and uh, high blood pressure? My advice is lifestyle fortification, healthy food, regular exercise, quit smoking and alcohol and be happy. <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much, doctor, for taking the time out to be with us and for patiently answering all our queries. So friends, as doctor rightly suggested, a healthy diet is very important. Don't forget to exercise and most importantly, don't get stressed. Learn to smile more. Be happy always. Wishing you all lots of happiness and good health always. Till we meet again next time, next Tuesday at 8 p.m. with a different topic. This is Anupama signing off. Stay healthy and stay happy. Good night.